As an urban farmer, we grew up saying, if they were to harvest this onion, they would pull it out. But for us as urban farmers, we don't. It is what has carved that is ready for eating. So if they came, we would pluck this, pluck this, pluck this, but keep this that is still straight. And that's, the, that's sort of what urban, farm, urban farming means, that you, you dig in small spaces, but you dig creatively. We started this farm in 2010. At that time, the purpose of this farm was to cut expenses in a home. And then along the way, as guests kept on coming, my husband's friends, one of them hosted expatriates that were eating organic foods. But he looked for organic foods on the market and they were not anywhere. In this country, mm -hmm. the yams are grown in uh, swamps. Mm -hmm. But we know very well that swamps have a high lead content. So for us as an organic farm, we grow our yams in, in uh, sacks. Mm -hmm. And each sack puts on about three tubers, mm -hmm. and we sell the three tubers at 20,000 Uganda shillings. 20,000 Uganda shillings is about eight to nine dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of money for us because on the local market, 10 yams cost about four dollars. Mm -hmm. So as an organic farm, I'm able to double my my sales because i'm really focusing on quality we started with just getting the strawberries packing them mm -hmm. and taking them to the market mm -hmm. each uh, 10 strawberries would cost 10,000 uganda shillings like four dollars mm -hmm. along the way we started making strawberry jam and the 50 gram bottle cost 10,000 uganda shillings so the other innovation we've gotten on this farm over time is value addition. Mm -hmm. Through value addition, we're able to make significant incomes that we would otherwise not be able to make. So as an urban farmer or a smallholder farmer, I plan my farm so that I'm in the market almost a full year range by having the different ranges of crops that I'm growing. So these small gardens are for the young children. And what do they do? You can see the vegetables are here. Yeah. And each of this vegetable, I will buy it at $2 oh. and deposit on the children's account. So it's, it's, it's one way to make sure that uh, they appreciate farming at such a very young age, but they get to know that actually through farming, someone can earn an income. When we started this farm, we had three cows that were given to us as a wedding gift. Our biggest challenge as urban farmers was the cow dung, because you can see our farm stops right at that wall, but yet the cow dung was always there almost every 30 minutes. So what we did, my husband constructed a biogas plant. Mm -hmm. It is this one. So the richest thing on this farm is the cow dung. Mm -hmm. He will pull out the pipe so that it goes to the biodigester. Mm -hmm. Apart from getting milk from the cow, in this biodigester, mm -hmm. that is where the real process of making gas happens, mm -hmm. which we use for cooking. We get bio light, which we, get for, which we use for lighting. Mm -hmm. Through that annually, we're able to save about 3,000 US dollars that would otherwise go for lighting and for cooking. When the gas goes out, mm -hmm. what remains of the cow dung is the bio mm -hmm. This is what brings in 80% of income on this farm. We do fertilizers, which we sell to as far as Rwanda, mm -hmm. and very soon we want to move to Nairobi. And then we also sell other neutralizers. Mm -hmm. For example, you're on a farm, but you can hardly really feel the stench mm -hmm. of a farm. Mm -hmm. So as, a, as an urban farmer, the game changer has been quality, mm -hmm. not quantity. Mm -hmm. Every time as a farmer you focus on quality, the market, you sort of carve out your niche yeah. to only those that really love quality. 